Did you get enough sleep last night? I didn't, nor the night before. These days, lots of people have trouble getting a good night's sleep. Insomnia, the inability to get to sleep, is now a major issue for many people. In Britain, over half of the adult population often struggle to fall asleep. And 10% of people regularly take sleeping pills. Even when people do get to sleep, they often sleep badly. Some people even struggle with sleeping disorders. These range from the common to the bizarre. Common sleep disorders include sleepwalking and somniloquy, also known as sleep talking. Stranger disorders include sleep paralysis, where people wake up unable to move, and exploding head syndrome, where people hear a loud noise like a bomb just before they sleep. In order to combat these sleep disorders, we need to understand more about sleep's effects. The problem is, sleep is still a mystery. I've come to the sleep unit at the Surrey Clinical Research Centre to meet the scientists who are trying to find out more. These scientists all study sleep. Instead of laboratories, they have bedrooms full of high technology equipment. These machines measure a person's brain activity and body movement during sleep. Scientists use these measurements to analyse people's sleeping patterns. They hope to discover what sleep is for and what happens to us when we don't sleep enough. We already know that sleep deprivation affects the part of the brain that controls our behaviour, our personality and our emotions. So when we don't get enough sleep, all of these things are affected. But why are we so sleep deprived? Researchers here say that we are sleeping enough hours, but that our sleep patterns are more irregular. The average adult sleeps for about seven and a quarter hours per night. This is almost exactly the same amount of sleep our ancestors used to get over a hundred years ago. The difference is they slept for just over seven hours every night, but we don't. Our sleeping patterns have changed to fit modern life. Today, most people lead busy lives and we often sleep less during the week. Sometimes we only sleep for five or six hours because we stay up late to work or spend time with friends. Then, at the weekend, people spend longer in bed and can sleep for ten hours. Perhaps this irregularity in sleeping patterns is something our brains find difficult to get used to, and this in turn affects our health and general well-being. That's why sleep clinics like this one are trying to learn more, so we can all sleep a little easier.